Hey guys, it's Medical Sus Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate Christmas. But don't forget, Christmas is not just a holiday for joy, happiness and peace. It's also prevalent in medicine. Oh dear pathology, you always ruin everything, so let's get started. Some words of wisdom. The clock is running. Make the most of today. Time waits for no man. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. This is so beautiful. Here is a very sophisticated question for you. Imagine that you ask the patient to draw a clock on a piece of paper. And the patient did it like this. And you ask the patient to add the numbers. So the patient did this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, until 12. All of the numbers are just in one half of the circle. And the patient did not draw anything here. What is this disease? Please let me know the answer down below in the comment section. Two years ago, I made a video talking about Christmas disease, which is named after Stephen Christmas, who lived from 1947 to 1993. What else happened in 1993? Nelson Mandela was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, medicosis. Now, Stephen Christmas, is that the doctor who discovered the disease? Shut up, doctor. Who cares about doctors? The most important person in the hospital is the patient. This was the first patient who had Christmas disease. We named it after Stephen Christmas. Christmas disease was discovered in 1952 by British doctors. So, to all of my friends in the UK, thank you. Thank you, Britain, for discovering Christmas disease and helping patients to be diagnosed with this very rare disorder. And also, you made medical students' life miserable. But who cares about medical students? The number one person in the hospital is the patient. Let's talk about the patient. Stephen Christmas, born in London, then he immigrated to Canada, and then he went back to London just for a visit. In Canada, he was diagnosed with hemophilia, but they just said it's hemophilia. They did not specify what type of hemophilia is it, because at that time in history, we only had just one type of hemophilia, which is now known as hemophilia A. Okay, back to London. In London, he bled. So they took him in Ox to Oxford Hemophilia Center and he got admitted. And then they ordered factor 8 level, hemophilia A, and factor 8 activity. And because we do not know if it's the, like whether it's the deficiency or antibodies against factor 8, they ordered mixing studies. All of them came back normal. But the PTT is prolonged. Like what? So this patient has hemophilia, but um, like factor 8 is normal? Like, what's going on here? Someone is about to be famous. Two doctors, Rosemary Biggs and Robert McFerlin, discovered hemophilia B. Hemophilia B is deficiency in factor 9, not factor 8. So we have three types of hemophilia, A, B, and C. Hemophilia A is deficiency in factor 8. Hemophilia B, deficiency in factor 9. Hemophilia C, oh, deficiency factor 10. Shut up, deficiency of factor 11. Since they discovered this disease in Stephen Christmas, they called it Christmas disease. The rest of the story is really sad. Stephen Christmas had hemophilia B, so he was dependent on multiple blood transfusions. But at that time, in Canada, they did not screen for HIV. So Stephen Christmas developed HIV. He died from AIDS in 1993. This is so sad. So for those of you who complain that today medicine is so bad, just go back 50 years ago or even less. The guy had AIDS from a blood transfusion in the hospital in Canada. Just some perspective, please. But now doctors learn from their mistakes and we screen every blood sample or every blood bag for HIV virus. Now let's have some jokes about Rosemary Biggs. She's a great doctor, do not get me wrong, but I'm just giving you some jokes for educational purposes. Let's have some medical fun. First, she's so beautiful. Not that I care, but this could be triple X disease. What do you mean? I mean, it's a trisomy. 47 XXX, like normal females are XX and they are beautiful. But imagine XXX, she is a super woman. She's super beautiful. Actually, none of this is true. This is just a myth from a conspiracy theory guy that does not read. Triple X has nothing to do with how beautiful you look. Just because you have an extra X doesn't necessarily mean that you'll become more beautiful. So that's a bad joke. Her hair is very silky. Could be a sign of hyperthyroidism. 
Her skin is orange. This is hyperkeratinemia, which has two possibilities. Either she is eating too many carrots or she is taking too much vitamin A to cure her acne. Her eyes are blue. This is a recessive trait and means she has low melanin, which allows blue rays to be scattered. And by the way, this is the same reason why the sky is blue. Because if you remember, the electromagnetic spectrum was a very wide spectrum like this. It contained like microwaves and visible light and x-rays, gamma rays, etc. Let's talk about the visible light. The visible light has like the seven colors of the rainbow. But why is the sky blue? Why not any other color? I'll tell you why. Because the blue color is the most scattered color in the atmosphere. Why is the ocean blue? Why is the sea blue? That's the reflection from the sky, honey. Where did you go to school? This is physics, baby. Hemostasis. Hemo means blood, stasis means stable. So hemostasis means prevention of blood loss. In other words, it means blood coagulation. Steps of hemostasis. Vasoconstriction, temporary blood plug, also known as primary hemostasis. Coagulation, which is secondary hemostasis by the coagulation factors. Stephen Christmas had deficiency in factor 9. Where is factor 9 here? It's there, baby. By the way, there is a playlist on my channel called Bleeding and Coagulation Disorders. Please take a look. Now, we're not talking about primary hemostasis. Now, we're talking about secondary hemostasis. We have intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway, here are your factors. 12, 11. Skip 10 because 10 is here. 9 and 8. Thank you. Then 10 into 10A. It's going to activate prothrombin to thrombin. Fibrogen into fibrin. Fibrin is the clot. Please stabilize it using factor 13. Stephen Christmas had deficiency of factor 9, and this is called hemophilia B, also known as Christmas disease. Here is a more sophisticated diagram, but this is the same issue. What's the problem in hemophilia A? You do not have factor 8, or you could have an antibody against factor 8. How about hemophilia B? The problem is in factor 9. How about hemophilia C? The problem is in factor 11. All of them are in the intrinsic pathway. When you have a problem in the intrinsic pathway, what's going to happen to the PTT? It's going to be prolonged. How about the extrinsic pathway? That's the PT, honey. But PTT is not just for the intrinsic. It's for the intrinsic and the common pathway. Most students forget that. PT is not just for the extrinsic. It's for the extrinsic and the common pathway. And I've discussed this in one of my best videos ever. It's called the coagulation cascade. Hemophilia B or Christmas disease, genetic disease. The problem is deficiency of factor 9. It's X-linked recessive, which means it's commoner in males than females. There is bleeding and the bleeding is deep. It's not just the superficial skin bleeding. No, 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 baby, this is deep bleeding. This is hemophilia. This is deep. This is hemophilia. This is the secondary hemostasis defect. What do you mean by deep bleeding? I mean bleeding into the joints. It's deep organs like internal bleeding. Also, there is something called late re bleeding. Cool. Now, how do you diagnose it? How about the bleeding time? The bleeding time is going to be normal. Why? Because primary hemostasis is normal. Platelets are okay. How about the PT? The PT is normal. How about the PTT? They, this is prolonged. How about factor 9 activity? It's going to be low, baby. All right. Remember. Von Willebrand disease, the problem is in factor 8 or in the Von Willebrand factor, which is a piece of factor 8. They are just combining together. Hemophilia A, problem with factor 8. Hemophilia B, decreased factor 9 activity. Hemophilia C, decreased factor 11 activity. And since we've got no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Speaking of snow, snowman, IgM. What do you mean by IgM? I mean, remember when we talked about cold agglutinin disease in a previous video? This elderly patient went to shovel some snow. He developed IgM immunopathy, which led to acute hemolytic anemia, the cold subtype. And that's an acute hemolysis. Another thing related to Christmas is the stocking. Glove and stocking distribution of neuropathy is seen in diabetic neuropathy. Why? Many mechanisms, many theories. Here are two. There is accumulation of sorbitol, which leads to osmotic damage. The other theory is non-enzymatic glycation, also known as non-enzymatic glycosylation. Basically, you have lots of glucose because you have diabetes. This will damage the vasa nervosa. These are teeny tiny blood vessels that feed the nerve. When you damage them, you get neuropathy. Okay, back to the sorbitol theory or the sorbitol mechanism. 
why is there accumulation of sorbitol? Basically, in diabetes, there is a problem here in the sorbitol dehydrogenase. What's going to happen to the sorbitol? It's going to accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. Now, sorbitol cannot be converted to fructose. Sorbitol can accumulate in your eyes, causing eye problems, and it can accumulate in your nerves, causing neuropathy. Tell me more about the neuropathy in diabetic patients. There is a glove and stocking distribution. Okay, what's the problem here? It's sensory neuropathy, which means pins and needle sensation, which is a fancy term for tingling and numbness, and there is decreased sensation. This is glove and stocking distribution. Okay, what about the cape-like distribution? Please let me know the answer down below in the comment section. Another thing that's related to Christmas is pityriasis rosea. This is a dermatological disease, and the skin rash follows a pattern of the Christmas disease, like this, like this, usually on the back of the patient, could be in the chest as well. But in real life, it's not gonna be that clear. I mean, get your head out of your gluteal region. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Speaking of bells, here is Bell's palsy. So, jingle bells, jingle bells, this is Bell's palsy. If you have Lyme now, you can get it bilaterally. For disseminated Lyme disease, give Ciftriaxone. For localized skin disease, you can give Doxy. If you want to learn more about treatment of different infectious diseases, check out my antibiotics course. It's available on my website and at the end of the video, I'll give you a discount. So please hang around. Speaking of Lyme disease, Lyme disease is seen work. First, the word Lyme is a small town in Connecticut, which is in the northeast United States. It's also present in, um, I mean Lyme disease, also present here, southeast Canada. And Canada has a very special location in my heart, like just under the diaphragmatic surface. Because the famous Dr. Joe, the nice guy who supported my pulmonology playlist, is from Canada. Also, I have another student from Canada. She's very nice and I tutor her online, explaining some medical topics to her. More information on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. Also, Canada is like special to me because the flag has maple syrup which reminds me of maple syrup urine disease. That's a terrible joke, I'm sorry. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer have a very shiny nose. It can also carry rickettsia disease. <laughs> so we have deer tick and deer fly. Those are common. Deer tick, what's the problem here? The deer tick can infect deer and even mice. Ixodes scapularis is a hard tick. You can divide ticks into hard and soft. Speaking of Exodes scapularis, it can carry bazillion organisms. It can carry the Borrelia burgdorferi. It can carry Babesia microtii, not to be confused with Babesia microtii. Anaplasma phagocytophyllum. What a beautiful name. Phagocyte, I get it, and has a phylum. Ehrlichia, whatever. I mean, who named these things? As well as a virus called Puazan virus, which is named after a town in Ontario, which is in Canada. Canada is very special in this video. I love you, nice people called Canadians. Now, let's talk about the diseases that correspond with these organisms. Borrelia will lead to Lyme disease. Babesia will lead to babesiosis, common sense. Anaplasma, anaplasmosis. Imagine my chalk, Ehrlichia. Oh, look at this, Ehrlichiosis. Puazan virus, Puazan virus disease. That was the famous deer tick. How about the deer fly? It's a vector for some disease. It's a vector for the bacteria Francisella tularensis, which causes a disease called tularemia. It's also a vector for a parasite called loa loa. It causes loa loa filariasis. So here are all the things that are Christmas related in medicine. I know your professor is not that creative. We get it. Christmas disease, hemophilia B, glove and stocking distribution, diabetic neuropathy, Christmas tree pattern, pityriasis rosea, the reindeer, and we've talked about all of this. Bill's palsy, it could be bilateral and Lyme disease and others. Snow, we have been talking about snow. So acrocyanosis and hemolysis, like acute hemolytic anemia, this is called agglutinin disease, usually an elderly patient who is shoveling snow. Snowman on chest x-ray. You know what's that? This is TAPVR. Total anomalous pulmonary venous return. What a great name for an ugly disease. Snowstorm on pelvic ultrasound. This is a hydatidiform mole. On gross examination, looks like grape cluster of grapes. 
Here is my antibiotics course available at medicosisperfectionaries.com. You can get 60% off if you use the promo code antibiotic60. Or even better, until the end of 2019, you can use the promo code BY2019-60 to get 60% off any of these products. Thank you so much in advance, and I'm sorry that I've ruined the holiday for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, and click on the join button to join the tribe. You can follow me on all of these platforms. Go to medicosisperfectionaries.com. I have many products, and I have mentorship if you'd like me to explain stuff for you one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift.